perfect. What is going on guys? Welcome to the Jaff Man. I'm your host, Jaff. Now, I've been making car videos over the last two months, although I haven't been on YouTube and in front of the camera for some time. So it's been a long time. It's been a long time, long time. I shouldn't have left you. Really, I've been filming a lot of the background work that goes on. And in today's video, I'm going to go about explaining to you all the new owner maintenance that I had to do on my particular vehicle. You see, I bought a car at the bottom of the pile, as in the bottom of the price pile. My car was only £6,600 and although for many of you a lot of the stuff that I'm about to show you that I done might be a bit daunting for your wallets, for me it only cost me £1,100 in total so far and that's just repairs, not any mods or anything like that. So I really would have liked to maybe record this sort of talking bit outside in the car as I'm driving but I don't have any of the necessary gear. And unless maybe this sort of sector of making videos about cars on my particular channel grows dramatically, this might be something I'll only consider at that point. Anyways, a little bit of waffling there. Let's just get into what I had to do. So £1,100 is literally what I spent on the car alone. And on parts alone, sorry. Not on any labour because all the labour was me. I spent 75 quid of that renting a ramp for a day to do a clutch and flywheel. I'm going to show you everything I had to do, not necessarily a DIY of how to do everything yourself, just a little overview of everything I've done. Might be something that you would have to do on a similar car of a similar age because it's about 15, 16 years old. Um, so it's a lot of these things you might have to do yourself, whether it's an M3, whether it's a Evo, whether it's something else. Although Japanese cars tend to be more reliable and longer lasting, but if you're throwing them about and hooning around in them, I'm sure they're going to need just the same amount of tender loving care. So with all that said, this is what I had to do. So first things first, what did I have to do? I had to fix this rear view mirror. As you can see, the fluid leaked. It leaked all over the damn gear knob as well and pretty much ruined it. It's quite a simple fix. If you look up E46 or E39, uh, auto dimming mirror replacement you can get a glass panel for somewhere between 30 to 50 pounds the one i paid for was 37 pounds nonetheless it seemed to be of a matching or superior quality to the oem unit a second hand mirror will cost you somewhere between 100 and 150 pounds and this was a good fix at 35 pounds all you have to do is use a soldering iron to remove two contacts split the board and then glue it to your new board Essentially, there's a lot of sticky residue left and I put some new sticky pads, glued it to the new board, board. just got to be aware of what side is positive and negative. I didn't get to show you it assembled, but it's kind of reverse of the process. And many guides online. Here's a lot of random bits that I happen to drop. Uh, now I'm going to jack the car up and try fit these random bits. I have to use this baby jack to lift the nose of the car up before I can get the main jack in. Here we go, I'm jacking away. Now it is really helpful to have one of these big F off jacks because it has a very wide jacking point at the front and it makes the whole jacking procedure very quick. As you can see that fat, fat jacking point I was on about and the little stubby bit. Now at the rear this is always very important, make sure you put a little wheel choke to stop it running away. Now in the previous video I mentioned these front uh, inner mud guards, the bottom ones, because they're separate on the M3, were completely toast, so I managed to get a second hand set. They're not absolutely mint, they have some minor damage, but very usable and very serviceable parts essentially. I managed to clean them up, put some 313 uh, aircraft grade surface protectant, and then cleaned up all these messy bits with a bit of degreaser detergent and a brush just working it away all I used is some bike degreaser or rather a chain degreaser for bicycles and then just using a soft bristle brush agitating the product in and then using warm water at the end to soak it all up now this isn't really for detailing sake it's just getting those dirty bits that were exposed because of the missing mud guard things 
just cleaned up because I don't know I'm a bit weird learned some of these weird things from my dad now I had to do some bits on the exhaust I had some exhaust gaskets at the front and rear of the catalytic to get done but whilst I was there I noticed a broken prop shaft flex disc in America they call it a guibo I also managed to change the constant pressure valve gasket from the rubber to the viton or whatever material it is absolute little annoying thing to get to make sure you have an oil drain pan ready and whilst I was there I thought I'll change the uh, gearbox mounts to another OEM set because they weren't supple anymore and they became hard and brittle don't really know what this thing does but it seems like some sort of weight ballast thing that sits in between and you basically got some nuts at the top and those will fit on top of the gearbox and at the bottom you have a washer and another nut and as you can see my flex disc is absolute toast it's uh, basically hanging on by the threads quite literally here's a comparison of the old one with a new one now these are quite cheap I managed to pick mine up for 50 pound and it's made by I can't remember Lemforda I believe and it's basically an OEM part with the BMW badge scratched out now this one is the original one that I took off and quite good to be have lasted 120k but putting that aside, I had more work. I wanted to change the shifter to a short shifter. The bearing was shot, a lot of free play in the gear linkage. Changed it out to a 545i manual shifter. And whilst I was there, I also did some Vanos tests via BMW DIS. Very cheap software you can buy. I also had some lacquer peel from the inspection video you might remember on the back bumper. That was really bothering me. I thought I'd address the cancer with some DIY rattle can job. It was all going really good until this happened. Yes, I look like a dirty, dirty builder. But, and it's raining. I'm just walking to the shop to get a drink. But today's the day I'm going to fix the M3 because it decided to stop going into gear. So, with all that I said, the recovery guy should be here soon. Going to the ramp I'm going to rent. So at this point, the prep work. Get the radiator out. I oh, the radiator. Radiator is intact. Get the fan clutch and the covers out and the fan, take that out, then this can move without issues when the engine tilts. Go take this bar off instead in case this hits here and then take that. Now with the rear covers removed, the engine will have tilt space. It's all free. Fans are Kenbley out. Should be good. So at this point, all the engine covers are off. Transmission jack in place, midsection off, V-brace off, exhaust just hanging. We're going to do the prop next, but before that, reverse light switch. Show me in here, man, the light. Reverse light switch. Make sure that's free. Master cylinder. This hose is going to get replaced. Now with the box separated, you can clearly see the problem. The release bearing is shot and the clutch is pretty much gone but still serviceable maybe for another five ten thousand miles who knows and then the flywheel left and right lots of play and in and out i had a lot of play too here's me taking the flywheel off already removing the rear main seal i wanted to do a proper job whilst i was in there so basically i replaced the rear main seal very easy just poke the old one out and use the old one to bash the new one in with a rubber mallet going evenly around the circle and there you can see it's such sat sat flush and whole here i am removing the pilot bearing i am basically using this technique that i saw on the internet where you keep shoving bread into the hole tap 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 and tap tap and away for a really repeated process maybe eight to nine times and eventually just eventually you'll see a sign of joy the bearing comes out as if by magic so that was really, really good and really, really happy result. Use the old bearing to put the new bearing into play. And the old bearing was pretty short. At this point, I decided to change the clutch fork, the pin to a metal version from a 540i and the little retaining clip. Here's the gearbox all cleaned up. Maybe not perfectly, but somewhat. And all the new bits fitted. Using a clutch reset tool for the self-adjusting clutch, I decided to make sure it's in the correct position because I essentially bought a used when i say used clutch and flywheel kit i basically bought a guy's project car build who he fitted it 
ran it for about a few thousand miles and then he blew the engine so he basically sold the car to bits and this clutch and flywheel kit is only a thousand miles or so old and i got pretty lucky whilst i was there i decided to change all the gear linkage bits i did change the shifter earlier on another day but it was just so easy to do it at this point and uh, yeah even this little rod joint at the rear of the gearbox which is a bit of a pit to get to under the car so whilst the gearbox was off i also done the input shaft seal and here i also done the braided clutch line which basically gives you a bit more consistent feel all said and done the car looks quite glorious washed up as it is in its current state there's a lot more videos coming up about the M3. I'm still going to continue making tech videos as and when I get hold of some technology that I personally buy and I feel like it's worth reviewing. Maybe this Ducky, Ducky, Ducky. So this Ducky 12SF video might be coming up soon as well as some Apple ecosystem videos as well as monitor comparisons, so on and so forth. I've got a few tech videos lined up. In the car front, I have a very awesome audio setup build on this E46 M3 in particular. I also have a Brembo BBK video coming, a CSL Airbox video coming, as well as a lot of the other niggly bits that I've done on this car and will be doing by the time I even get there. So if you haven't followed me, if you haven't joined me on this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button, give me a like, talk to me in the comments below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Perfect.